don't like to say that, of course, on the. <laughs> so on the it's uh, it's on YouTube. It says waiting for me, but I think that's just because. Of course. There, there we are. Yeah, it's on YouTube. So if you are watching us as we just get ourselves sorted out, we are just um, a few minutes early and getting the tech working as usual. Yet yeah, there we are. Just Facebook as well. Us. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. Everything is working. I think this is the first year when we haven't had at least one that didn't work. Maybe last year was okay as well, but yeah. I've had it when I've been doing the introduction of the full course and Zoom has not worked and I've been running around. At the time I was living with Phil, I was yelling at him like, like he could do something, just like, <laughs> Phil, Zoom's not working. <laughs> Let me just start webinar. Um, there are a few people asking us. Um, there are a few people asking us if we can put subtitles on in different languages, and sadly, we can't do that. We can. We're here in England, and everything we do is in English, and we can manage subtitles and transcripts in English. But I'm sure that in whatever country you're watching in, there is an app for subtitles away in your web browser or an app you can install that will translate. But it's not something we can do. So um, let me just come back here. Hi, seeing everybody coming in. Irene's monitoring. Uh, oh, Irene is here with me, as you can see. Irene is my guest coach for tonight. We will be answering questions, chatting. Um, just tell everybody where you are, Irene, because I don't think people on this free course have met you yet in person. Yeah, just in the quick um, <clears throat> welcome call, wasn't it? Yeah. I am in West Yorkshire, where Louise is in North Yorkshire, and it sounds like we're next door, but uh, there's Yorkshire's the largest county in uh, Britain, I believe, or England, or even the UK. I'm not too sure, but it's a large county. And the roads in Britain, which come as a great surprise to a lot of Americans visiting here, don't allow you to travel from A to B, from B to C, from C to D and back again in very quick time, do they, Louise? No, they do not. Because <laughs> I've lived in America and I know what it's like to go as far as you are from me in America yeah. or Canada. Yeah, yeah, very easy, straightforward, big road, very unless you get easy. an accident, very rarely you get an accident. And also when you get an accident in America, they don't decide to close down the entire road for three hours while they do some kind of investigation. They just have a man with a thing saying, waving you by, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. while they wheel bodies off to the side. And that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but not much. So, yeah, you do travel a lot easier in some parts of the world than you do here. You do. So I do. I've lived in Yorkshire most of my life, but I, I started my, my life at one year old in Glasgow in Scotland. For the first year of my life, I was in Long Island, New York, where I was born. My parents were living over there. And all that said, my blood is Irish. So there we go. A nice. <laughs> Mine too, actually. Is it really, Louise? It is. Well, on my dad's side, yeah. Um, well, I've got it on all sides and and through the grandparents, so I'm proper pucker Irish. So right, I won't have I won't have that challenged. Um, no, we won't challenge it, Irene. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Catherine, if you sent a question via email, I'm sorry, but we can't keep up with all the email questions and everything so if you want to ask a question I see you on YouTube just stick it here in YouTube and I'll see if I can get to it and um, we've got a lot to cover tonight because we want to wrap up we want to talk about today's assignment just uh, yesterday's assignment so I want to talk about that I want to briefly wrap up because I think we've we've wrapped up each assignment as we've gone and give you some some thoughts that I have um Oh, I see Irene. Oh, that must have been earlier. You were gesturing because I was watching something else. Yes. I'm watching the YouTube. And so um, and then we are going to talk about the full course. Um, but before we do that, I'll tell you what's next, because there will be some more stuff coming to you by email this week as free course attendees. So I don't want you to miss that. So I'll fill you in on that and talk about when the group closes, etc. 
Um, so don't forget everyone if you do have a question type the word question in capital letters it mm -hmm. makes it so much easier for us to see yes and we will not be able to get to everyone so I apologize for that but we're going to try and pick out some good questions that we feel like will be helpful to everyone so let me get my notes up here make sure I'm concise and I cover what I meant to cover because I can ramble on so the first thing I wanted to mention about this assignment about limitations as I said in the lesson limitations can be so freeing and it doesn't have to be quite as rigid as I gave you but setting yourself some kind of limitation frees you up to try all sorts of things um I loved the way lots of people started to get the point towards the end of the exercise and start thinking, right, I know I've got X amount of marks. How am I going to use them? Because that is the kind of fun thinking that happens in art making, not the stressful thinking about, is this right? Am I going to, is it a good picture? But the puzzling, the challenge in thinking through puzzles is so important. And some people, I, I, I read comments from some people upset that other people cheated, cheated. Maybe they didn't use the collage or maybe they did things in a different order or maybe they added something of their own. But I love that because artists cheat all the time. Like we set ourselves limitations and then we go break them. That's OK. Um, but I wanted you to see how valuable for some of you anyway, limitations can be. But when we have every option that's available to us in the world, it's hard. How do you how do you possibly decide which one to do? But when you set yourself a limitation, maybe I'm going to use black, white and red, but I can use different media. I can use ink and paint and oil pastels or whatever, but those are the only colors I can use. Now you've got something interesting to explore and expand on. And that, by the way, applies to realistic painting and abstract painting. This is most people did that exercise abstractly, but there's no reason that that cannot be a realistic exercise, as in the other ones, too. Um, so what what I wanted to say about what I think we've learned this week or I hope we've learned this week. And Irene, you might want to add to this if, if I miss anything, but I hope that. First of all, we've learned that everyone is unique, that even with the same instructions for exercises, you all did something different. If you have any doubt that you have a unique artist voice inside you waiting to be expressed, or if you have any doubt that there's a cohesive style to the work that you make, you can put that doubt to rest now because you can see that given the same materials and instructions as someone else, you made something completely different because you are unique. Um, I hope you've learned that play and experimentation are really valuable in terms of moving your art forward. So we have pros in this group and beginners and we have people in between, but wherever you are on the journey, you're never done. And the pros know that. I mean, I never feel like I'm not pushing to a new place. That's the whole point of making art. So play and experimentation is the way I consistently move my work forward. And it's the way every artist I know who's good at this moves their work forward. I hope you've learned that, that doing that will always take you to the next level. And I hope that you've got a glimpse into what it takes to make the kind of unique, exciting art that you want to make. I know I can't teach you how to do that in eight days, teach you how to get to wherever it is you want to get to next. But I hope you can see it's possible from what we've been doing. I think. Sorry, before I go on to the next point, was there anything else that you wanted to add to that, Irene? And it doesn't matter if there isn't because I didn't prep you. But No, no, it's fine. Something that comes to mind for me is a, is a question that arose quite a few times when I was uh, on my shift and answering questions. And I kept saying the same thing. So I'll just mention it now, which is people desperately wanting to find their style and being concerned that they were doing a lot of different things. And me saying, as you do, 
style isn't really the issue it's voice because whatever style of work you you do you might do something different every single day of the week but your unique artist voice will come through in all of them and other people will look at all the diverse things that you make and see you in them and if people can take that away i think that increases the joy because they don't feel constrained to make a whole cohesive body of work which is a thing some people want to do mm. and it's a brilliant thing to do if that's the way you're heading but if you're still finding out what really floats your boat I think it's one of the best ways of noticing your own voice developing and increasing the freedom yes yes because you will eventually make cohesive artwork yeah. if you pursue this but it's it's like Irene says it's spotting the clues in your own work as you go Oh, I get it. I always love yellow. Oh, I get it. I love a palette knife. And then bit by bit by bit. But it's OK. Also, if you want to do something totally different and later in the week, I'll be sending out um, an inspirational story of an artist who first took this course back in 2019 and who works very in, on portraits and very abstract abstracts and does both really brilliantly and loves both and there are lots of people like that so like Irene says she still has a consistent voice because she still is the same person but it's the style of the two things is different and yet somehow it's also a bit the same because she's found her own way with her work yeah. um, one of the things that came up on a podcast I was listening to and I wanted to mention this because it came up in the group a few times about I don't, some people didn't see the point of just daubing paint around with no purpose, right? That's all I'm doing. I'm just throwing paint around. And this podcast I was listening to, and I'm, I'm afraid I can't remember the, the podcast or the name of the person speaking, but she was a writer and she was saying that being creative is so vitally important that those of us who feel called to some kind of creativity we shine a light for everyone with that creativity. We transmute pain into beauty. So when the world is such a mess, as, as so much of it is these days, we transmute that mess in, and we make something beautiful with it. We show people what's possible. We shine a light for other people that you too can make something out of nothing, that you too can follow what you love. The artists of the world make things that help the rest of us get through life at difficult times. Think of the music that gets you through or the films that get you through. And paintings do that too. Artwork does that too. And if even one person is impacted by seeing you follow your creativity, then that is enough. And I'm just going through that at the moment with my next door neighbor, is 18 years old and she was always creative I've known her since she was nine I think and she was always good at drawing and always creative but seeing me and what I'm doing really provided a model and an inspiration for her and I think for her parents to show what's possible and she went started this week at Leeds um, University of the Arts the big art school near me and I feel like that's not my doing, of course, but I feel like I played a part in that just by doing my thing. And who knows, maybe she is going to be a far better artist than me. Maybe she is going to be the most important artist of our generation or her generation. Who knows? But because of that act of me just doing my thing, that ripples through to other people. It ripples through to all of you because I do this. And the same for all of you out in your world. Maybe it just encourages your spouse to do something they've always wanted to do or your sister to take a risk. You don't know what the outcome of pursuing your creativity is. But there's a quote somebody posted in the group, and I apologize again, I didn't get the name of who posted it, but it's by Mary Oliver, who wrote, the most regretful people on earth are those who felt the call to creative work who felt their own creative power restive and uprising and gave to it neither power nor time. 
And I don't want you to be those people. And I hope this week that we've inspired you because this is about, this isn't just about making art. This is about finding yourself. This is a personal journey, not just about bits of paper and paint. And as I said, there is tons of good stuff coming this week in email. I'm putting it together now. I've made an extra video for you today. I think I made another video for you yesterday. Um, I've got this case study story coming. I just want to keep you inspired through this week with more ideas and more things you can be doing. Brilliant. And that's it for me on my wrap up. I just want to answer some questions because that will probably remind me of what I haven't covered. Let well, me throw I one in. Sorry, that's me. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll <laughs> throw one in straight away then, Louise. Yes, please. Uh, this is from Betsy. I used to be called Betsy when I was with Louise. Oh, you did? I did. So Louise, Betsy says, you've said that when you want to learn something in a piece, do 10 more. Mm -hmm. right? We all know that. That's a famous quote from Louise. Now, she says she has an issue doing multiple pieces in the same vein, as it were. Uh, I do a landscape, then a still life. I find it hard to get traction. Any suggestions to keep exploring without immediately feeling that like it becomes a chore of production, the very opposite of what you mean. Yeah, that's a good point, isn't it? It's about, hmm, you don't have to, first of all, because I think we're all different. You don't have to do 10 more if that's really miserable. But it sounds like you want to be more focused. I think it's about, you said I do a landscape and then I do a portrait. Those are very results focused things. I'm doing a painting, I'm making a picture. But when we do exploration and we play like a child, it's just fun. And we just get, we get caught up in our own creative curiosity. So it really is about putting aside that idea of making something and instead picking something you enjoy and doing a lot of that to see what happens. So if I do that limitations exercise, and I really like it. And I'm really by like number eight, starting to make some, have some good ideas. That's when I'll go do several more. Like, right, let me do more of this. But this time, let me change the rules a bit. Let me try it. Oh, I really liked what happened with the ink. Let me do that. Let me, I didn't like the oil pastel. I'll take that out of my limitation rules and I'll do something else. And when we're having fun, that's when we're on the right track. While ever you are feeling like it's a production, you are not on the right track yet because you haven't found what lights you up inside and makes you feel really, really good. And by the way, it's quite possible that that is gardening or ceramics or sculpture or printmaking. It's quite possible that it's not painting but you need to find what it is because we only get this one life and we want to be doing the thing that makes us really happy in that one life, if at all possible. Sorry, can Sorry about that, Louise. That's okay. Um, that's okay. I, I just want to answer this one on YouTube from Leanne while you're looking, Irene. When you are pursuing a fresh idea, do you recommend first testing and doodling and playing around with the idea in a sketchbook before committing to a canvas of good quality paper? So this is one of those questions that is entirely individual. So I like to work in a sketchbook when I'm playing with a new idea. And I'm actually, I've got a video about that coming out for you later in the week about how I use an art journal. And so I will work a lot in sketchbooks or on loose sheets of inexpensive paper just to kind of explore the idea and think about where I want to go with it. But I do a podcast and my co-host, Alice Sheridan, she does not like that. She likes to work out her ideas on the wooden panel or the canvas that she's working on. And so she'll have layers and layers in her painting. And she doesn't, she does use sketchbooks occasionally, but not in the way I do. So it's really about trying it out, Leanne. And over time, you will find out which one is right for you or if there's some other process that's right for you. Do you have any more questions, Irene? Just the one that's possibly, you know, in, in a lot of people's minds, but they don't put it into words. Um, Nia Dosh says, 
I enjoy the painting process, but always find the results ugly. How do I move on? Yeah, so you need, at some point, so you enjoy the process, which is good. At some point, in order not to have ugly results, there are some basic things you need to understand. You need to understand how compositions work. You need to understand the impact of darkness and lightness on your painting. You need to understand how to use colour. And you need to understand also what it is you're trying to get. So there's a lot in that, right? So when we're beginning, we can't get to all that because we've got to learn it piece by piece. And that's why in eight days, we we can't do that. There's too much to teach. It, it's a lot in 12 weeks when we do the full course. That's that, that's a lot of our focus. It, it can be, um, for me, I think those things are a lifetime of learning. Like I'm still learning those things. But that is why you're not loving the results is that you don't yet know how to master them. So earlier in the Facebook group, I put out a video of me doing ugly painting. And some people said, but it still looks nice. To their eyes, it looked nice. Some of that is that when you understand color and composition and tone and mark making and principles of contrast and principles of harmony, you can't help make things look okay, even when you are making them ugly. And you might have seen that with some of the more experienced artists in the group, because we just know what to do and you can't unlearn that. Um, so that is just part of, that is just something that you've got to work on and learn over time. And I would just throw in there complete reassurance that learning these principles and starting to apply them and starting to like your results a bit more, it just takes time. I spent most of 2019 learning a lot of principles, including from Louise and one other big long course. So I knew the principles, I understood them really well. And did, it, did that mean I liked all my results moving forward? No, I, no, it didn't. I had to keep painting and painting and getting gradually a bit better. So it does. Just take some time and practice. Don't be dismayed. If you enjoy the process, someone's knocking at my door, I won't be a minute. If you enjoy the process, that is a big win, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Irene just has to pop off. And I just want to say, if anyone is watching this in the taster group, any of the moderators or Jamie, if you could pin this to featured, because I don't seem able to do that for some no, reason. No, I can't either. I tried, but I think Anne might have done it. Somebody might have done it. But... Maybe it's already been done. Uh, hopefully it's showing up there. Um, I am going to just check YouTube for any other questions. There's people saying we're not live on Facebook, but we are. We are live on Facebook. I can see that. What happens if it hasn't been pinned into featured straight away? It just behaves like a post, everybody. It moves down the feed a little bit. So yeah. we always pin it into featured and we might have just been a bit late in, in doing that. So trust us, it's definitely there. Yeah. Um, Rainbow Fran, your question is about the course and there's a lot of questions about the course, which I'm going to get to in a second. I'm just looking if there's anything else that we can answer that relates to this free course. Um, um, Sharon says, for those fortunate to live in Yorkshire, do you have any open days? I'll make the food. Stay tuned, Sharon, because <laughs> maybe I'm just looking at possibility for somewhere new to live and work. And if that place comes through, there will be open days and times to come and see my studio and my work there. Someone's um, asking, she didn't write the word question, but I've caught her question. Vicky, technical skills are important, right. But how much can we go off on a tangent? Well, so, meaning? Once you've learned the skills, can you just go off on a tangent? And of course, that's what learning skills and principles is actually all about, isn't it? It's a bit like learning scales in music and doing all the, you know, the boring repetitive practice stuff. That's so you can extemporize, that's so you can compose. And when we've learned principles and we know what works, they don't tie us down. 
they are on the side in our toolkit. And on the day where we just don't want to apply any principles, we just want to go mad and go off on a tangent, we can absolutely do it. You can always do exactly what you want, but it's always really good to understand some basic principles which do work, which always work, and which can get you out of a hole if you get a bit stuck. Yes, yes, exactly. And and um, I was just thinking, I once had a critique with someone who was not impressed with any of the paintings I liked, a quite well-known artist, and then who saw one that didn't meet any of the so-called principles of composition and went, oh, that one's cool. And I said, yeah, but it doesn't really fit with the composition principles. And he said, oh, who cares? It's brilliant. It looks great. And that's the thing. We only need to follow the rules when, like Irene says, if we need them. If we love what's there, who cares? But if something's wrong with it, you're able to look and see the rules and say, is that, mm, yeah, have I, is there something there I could change? Um, lots of, uh, do you ever struggle, orally, I'm going to take one off Facebook, do you ever struggle with feeling guilt about making art? Absolutely not, because, oh, I'm going to get off on a rant now. Oh, I'm going to get cross. Because what could be more important than, as I said, our creativity, I truly believe, shines a light in the world and is really important in the world. On large, in large scale, when you're the world's most famous artist and on a small scale, when you just inspire one person around you or even just yourself, are you not important enough to be happy and fulfilled and to grow personally? Do you not matter? The family tasks that you mentioned orally, are they more important than you? Like is, is making everyone an amazing home cooked meal more important than you fulfilling something in you? I don't think so. And I actually think everyone benefits in your life when you are creatively fulfilled they might not realize it when you start changing, but they do because you are so much happier. Absolutely. Have you ever felt guilty, Irene? No, but I'm single. <laughs> yeah, so you I'm don't have old, anyone to worry about. I'm an old lady and I live alone. I can do what the hell I want. I don't answer to anybody. I used to answer to people. I used to do everything for everybody. I was one of those moms and housewives. Uh, but I also had a very busy life where I spent a lot of time doing my thing with the things I was, you know, really passionate about. So I guess it's similar. And I just did them. I just did them because they were me and they were mine. And I, we do hear from people quite a bit whose marriages get perked up when the woman starts to be really confident about herself. And she's yeah. doing what? My, oh, my husband, he never used to say anything about my art. And he, and he used to complain because I wasn't sitting watching the television with him. And now he kind of swells with a bit of pride when he sees what I'm doing. Yeah. It rubs off on everybody when, when, when we are more who we really are. Yes, exactly. And if it didn't, I mean, if you were with someone or you had friends who didn't respond well to you being more who you are and happier, do you really want them in your life? That's the question. I know. Um, thankfully for most people, most people's families do. And even if there's initially a little bit of a, oh, what's mum doing or what's dad doing, that can, that can, that soon goes when everyone realises that you're, that you're, you know, looking after yourself. And Aurelie makes an amazing point. I do want my daughter to see my commitment to developing this love. And that is so important. Now, I don't have children, um, but Alice, again, who I mentioned earlier, she was raising a family when she first went full time with her art. And she said that was so important to her, to for her children to see that mum um, is following what she loves and making a success of it and working really hard at it and that you can do that and that women can do that and I know men can do that too but often it's women that need to model that especially for daughters. True. A, a little easy quick question Louise, uh, Carol's asking can we access uh, your other YouTube videos after the course? Yes yeah, so my YouTube channel is there um, and everything's accessible. The videos on there are going to slow down. I've done a lot this year for free. 
um, the, I record a podcast, I do the YouTube channel, I write a weekly newsletter on a Sunday, and a lot of free teaching, which is partly um, because I love it and partly because I want to bring people into my world and um, hopefully persuade them to come along and do some of the, the learning with me because I know how valuable it is. But I need to slow down. I'm having some life changes happen. I need for this next period of time to be more about that. As I said, maybe moving into a new workspace, all of that. So YouTube is content, free content is really going to slow down in this coming year. It's not going to be my priority. But what's there is there and that's not going away. So there's lots on my YouTube channel. Um. Well, the Shall color, we? Sorry, go on, Irene. Oh, sorry. The the color mixing video is that is that it on your YouTube channel, Louise? Will that stay online? I don't know if that one is. Um, I don't yeah. know if that one is, but there are certainly quite a few color mixing videos on the YouTube channel, which are along the same lines. Even if that one isn't. Right, yeah. Um, Ingrid says, "I am a person who constantly asks a lot of questions." Risk being even more lost with many more questions with intensive training to come. So um, let's talk about that in a second, Ingrid. I just want to say for everyone wondering what happens to the free course stuff now, um, the Facebook group and the content remains live until September 16th. The full course starts on the 18th. And at that point, on the 16th, all that free content will move into the full course and it's there as bonus content for the full course students so that they can access it for a whole year. Um, but it comes down and the Facebook group um, just gets archived. You can't add more content to it. Um, but we have to do that. Just We can't maintain a big Facebook group like that. It takes a lot, as you've seen, to manage it. Um, but Ingrid is asking if if she were to move on to the other course, would she get lost with lots because she asked lots of questions? So why don't we talk a little bit about what that is, um, about what that course is and how it works and how you get your questions answered. And I have to just say, I keep scratching my nose. Do you know what? When I talk, my nose itches and it makes it look like I'm picking my nose. So... <laughs> I'm just you're letting always, everyone know. I'm not picking you're my... Always, you're always saying that. We know. know. It goes <laughs> mad. It itches so much. I when know. I'm it's mad. funny, isn't it? <laughs> um, let us see. I want to talk to you a little bit about what's coming and what's available for you if you want to continue with me. And that's because I'm seeing so many questions coming in that are about that. So Ingrid, first of all, you will not get lost because the thing about the full course is it's so much smaller than this one. Um, I don't think we could manage to teach this many people on the level that we're going to be teaching at and with the amount of personal attention we're going to be giving. So thankfully, uh, even though we'd love to have you all along, not everyone comes along. Um, so questions all get answered on that full course. The way it works is it is now open for you to sign up and you will have had an email and if there should be a link with this video wherever you're watching, and if there isn't, there will be shortly as soon as I finish talking. But you will have emails telling you how to sign up. And you have between now and September the 14th at midnight Pacific time. So that's in America, which is about, I think, 8 a.m. our time here in the UK on the 15th. But September 14th, midnight Pacific. And what the Find Your Joy course is, it's more than a painting course. As you've probably seen just from this week, it's a, it's a transformation. It's a transformation experience. It's 12 weeks. We start on September 18th. And this year it is two courses rolled into one. So it used to be eight weeks of education stretched over a 10 week period. And then a second course that you signed up for if you wanted to that was more advanced that went for another six weeks. And I have now rolled them all into one, the both those courses into one. 
So you get 12 weeks of intensive learning. You get everything at once. There's no extra thing to sign up for at the end. Um, and you're paying less than you would have for two, but I'll get to that. You get 12 weeks live teaching. You get a full year's access. And all this will be in the information that you've received by email. And you get a much smaller Facebook community. And that Facebook community continues even after the one year is over. Those Facebook groups from prior years are still going strong. Um, you have seen, Irene, how professional and organized and responsive we are, even with this many people. So imagine how much better we get when we don't have as many people. Um, so yes, every question gets answered and you'll get instructions on how to get your questions answered if you sign up. What are we going to cover? We are going to continue exploring how to paint with freedom and joy. And we're going to go much deeper into the psychology behind art making, why you might struggle with that, what you can do to, to loosen up. We're going to look at how to bring in inspiration from other artists and from yourself. We're going to talk about two key principles that drive all your art decisions or will once you understand them. And that is the principle of contrast and the principle of harmony and bringing harmony as an idea into find your joy. That's the first year I'm teaching that in this course. It was an advanced concept previously, but it's really important. We're going to look at color mixing. We're going to look at composition. We're going to look at tonal values and we're going to look at mark making. We're going to look at intention. How do you find your intention for your work? We're going to look at intuition. How does that play into intention? And throughout all of that, we're going to be guiding you in how to build and develop your own process, your own standards, your own guidelines for your art and your own intentions. So that by the time we finish 12 weeks on, you will be ready to continue on your own and you won't need us anymore. And if you think, well, how will I, how, how will all that work for me in just 12 weeks? I want you to go into the Facebook group or email people you know, ask any of the former students, and they will tell you that you will be completely transformed by the end. You will know what you want your art to be about. You will be finding out what you're going to be. You won't be finished, by the way. It's not like 12 weeks done. You'll be like Irene and I and all the other coaches. You'll be on your path. We never finish until we drop dead. We just keep learning and growing. It's amazing. Um, but you will never be stuck for what to do in your studio. You will have a process. You will just know what to do with your artwork. And as we were saying earlier, your family will not be able to thank us enough because you will be happier, more confident and just different in regular life. When you get the email and you look at the page for the course, you'll see a link to look at testimonials and reviews. And we have all sorts of video interviews with people. So you can see for yourself what experience they had and how they changed. Um, key question, how much does it cost? This is the best value it's ever been. Because as I said, it's two courses in one. So the two courses total last year were £1,500 if you took both. This year, 12 weeks of intensive learning is £995. If you want to know what that is in your currency, you can just Google. There's all sorts of currency converters. And also on the page to sign up, we have a currency converter link for you to check. Um, but compare that, for example, to a three day live workshop, which many of you have probably done where you go work with the tutor in person and you might pay anywhere between 300 to 500 pounds for that three days. Here we're getting 12 weeks of all of us, my coaching team and myself consistently every day for 12 weeks for 995. So I think it's an amazing bargain. Um, and the other thing I should say before I open up to questions is this is, I think, my sixth time teaching Find Your Joy, and it may be the last. It certainly is the last in this format. 
I'm considering developing something new after this rest time or also considering making this not a live program, but something that uh, happens on your own without us being there live to coach. I'm not sure because, you know, being an artist, we decide what we want to do when we and do what we feel like, follow the joy. Um, but I don't know that this will run like this again, certainly not in the near future. Um, one other thing I should mention before I go to questions is the pay, there is a payment plan. So it's 995, but if you want, you can pay in four installments, monthly installments, which means the last installment actually happens after the course ends. And uh, all the details of that pricing will be in the email that you get. That costs a little bit more in total if you do that, because obviously we're taking a risk and with those payment plans. But um, if you need to spread out the costs, that can be a really good way to do it. I just did the sums and that works out, Louise, over 12 weeks, uh, 83 quid a week for all those videos that you individually record uh, all the bonus material that you source and include yeah all the, all the all the hours that coaches will put in to being alongside you you will you will get all your questions answered it will be a very holistic experience and uh, you know even if it's only you know even if you're only using the course materials for so let's say six hours a week you're still getting you're getting it for like 14 quid an hour it's silly money it is I silly know, money i know it's a big sum for a lot of people and that doesn't make it too expensive it makes it maybe out of your reach and we're sad that that's yes. the case for some people yeah it's a fantastic value and that was all i wanted to say i wanted to break down that big scary number into what it comes down to for what people get Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, a few questions coming in. Um, no specialist equipment needed. The materials list is very similar to what we've used in the free course. Um, it does not include membership in our tribe because that would be like mad because it's so cheap already. Um, somebody says the sign up site has been overloaded so i apologize for that hopefully it will work very soon hundred dollars a week in us dollars says mabel when i said live somebody said what do you mean live i mean that for 12 weeks irene myself Anne, heather donna everyone you've met so far on this free taster course we are here every day they take a rest on sundays i keep working we are live in, we do live calls. We um, do two live calls a week. We also have the recorded lesson. We do live calls at different times of one in the morning, one in the evening to hit different parts of the world. And we're answering questions as they come in. Um, other types of courses you've probably done where you sign up and you just do it at your own pace. That's what I meant. It might turn to that later. I'll talk about our tribe shortly. I just want to deal with all these questions. Yes, for beginners, if you enjoyed the free taster, you will enjoy the course. We go at a, a much more sedate pace in the full course because if, if I drove you at this pace for this week for 12 weeks, I think we'd all be dead. So we, we go more slowly. You need about... By minimum six hours a week, I would say, to get everything out of the course that I'm putting out. If you can spend more than that, that's great. Maybe 10 hours a week, you know, but if you can do an hour a day or, you know, Saturday and Sunday, a few hours, that's plenty to keep up. And if you are away at any point in the course, instead of it coming in emails like the free course, we have a course website where everything resides in a very organized fashion. So you can log in with your password and look at things at any time. Every time we do a live call, it gets uploaded there. Um, so you never have to hunt around for anything because you know where it is. It's all in one place. So you can definitely keep up. Um, yeah, that was, that's been quite a common question, Louise. I'm going to be away for two weeks. Is it going to be all right? Yeah. 
No, absolutely. This happens over 12 weeks, but you have access to all of the material for a year. There's no such thing as being behind because you can work at a pace that's good for you, too slow for somebody else, too fast for somebody else. The, um, the material, as Louise has described, is beautifully organized inside that website. It's so easy to na navigate around and pick up on where you left off. So yes, you can have a break or a holiday during the 12 weeks without it uh, impacting upon your progress. And we do have one week, I believe it's week seven, which we've designated as a learning integration week where there'll be a little bonus assignment, a little talk from me, but basically you'll have a week to catch up with the first section before we dive into the second half of the course. Um, Anne is asking, given the number of participants in the free course, do you think you might get oversubscribed and find it difficult to give everyone the personalized attention you'd like to? Um, no, I'm not worried about that because I have a good team. I have a couple of extra people on standby if I need them. Coaches from prior years who would be available to do some hours. Former students who are willing to step in and help. So I'm not worried about that. Um, there is a number which probably if it got to that, I might shut off subscriptions, but I don't think we'd get to that number. It's a long way beyond what we've ever been at. We do not, Sharona, just sorry, Irene, one more and then I'll come to you. We do not give personalized critiques on this course in the sense of we do not ask you to submit your artwork and then we tell you if we think it's good or not or what you could do differently. Because as you'll see when you get into the assignments, it's not that kind of course. We're not we're not asking you to get things right. We're asking you to experiment and try things so there's no point in feedback however we do give personalized feedback in the sense of if you post if you post a question to us and you can email us with questions and if you say did i understand that principle did i get what you were teaching me here's what i did did that that kind of thing yes but we don't have um, this isn't a course about critiques i'm not a fan of critiques I don't think they're very helpful. I think someone else's opinion about your artwork can completely throw you off. And I think the last thing that matters is someone else's opinion. That's my core philosophy is that what we're going to teach you to do is critique your own artwork. That's what I want. I want you to be able to say, I'm proud of this. I think this needs to be better. I, I want to change this in the following ways. And then we know you don't need us when you leave the course. That's great. And that that applies to when we come into the Facebook group, just as it has been during the taster. We don't go around giving likes and telling you how wonderful your piece of work is. And that might feel frustrating to some people. We're there to give you the biggest cheer possible when you break through one of your limitations, one of your limiting beliefs. When you say, I got it, I got it, I understood that lesson. We cheer that, we cheer your progress, we cheer your mindset shifts, we cheer your willingness to have a go, we cheer that you show up and show your stuff even when you're very shaky and unsure of it. That's what we share, that's what we cheer, that's what we give likes to. So right from day one, Louise is training you not to look for validation about your work from anybody else but validation for your understanding your breakthroughs your willingness and so on and and then this little question is just more straightforward what's the pace of assignments in the course i.e an assignment every other day like the taster course and no it's 12 weeks 12 modules and you will only get one module um, made available to you on the website per week so in one week's module, you will get several short videos, Louise, I'm right in saying that? Yeah. And very often, because Louise keeps doing this, giving you extra bonus content as well of things that you wouldn't expect very often. So once a week on a Monday morning, let's say it will vary according to where you are in the world, you will get that week's assignment released and you can take all week to go through the videos. Yeah. Try them out. Yeah. 
Uh, yes, and there's one thing new this year, which is there is also an ongoing assignment. So this is a new thing I've put into the course this year. Um, the course has developed and changed as I've developed and changed. So as I learn more, I think, oh, yeah, that would be good. Oh, we need to change that. So everything this year has been redesigned and um, restructured. The first four weeks are fairly similar. And then after that, it starts to change from prior years. And um, one of the things that's changed is right from the beginning, I'm adding in an assignment that you will work on a little bit every week until the end of the course. I can't tell you what that is because it's a, it's a surprise, but that will be on top of the main assignment. Um, and people asking about different mediums, if you work in watercolor or oils, absolutely. And if you got stuck on any of the assignments that I've created, you could just email us or ask us in any of the ways that you're allowed to ask questions and we will help you adapt the assignment for you. So that's not a problem. Um, somebody though earlier asked about things like ceramics and sculpture and Honestly, I don't think so. I think this is a painting course. I mean, there's lots of valuable information that I'm giving that probably relates, but I I wouldn't want to tell you that the assignments probably are painting assignments, I think. Um, how many hours a week, Linda? I mentioned that. That is about um, seven minimum, six to seven minimum a week. Um, more if you can do more. Uh, um, lovely to see all those people saying they signed up, Pam. Um, haven't seen those yet. Lovely to see so many people saying. Um, Donna's saying if you have PayPal credit in the US, you can sign up using the one-time payment with PayPal credit and pay it off over six months. So I don't know about that, but that's interesting. PayPal's really good that way. You can do that in the UK also. You can do... Um pay in three and they don't charge you for the installments it's wonderful this question louise from linda says uh she's worried she wants to do the course but her studio has flooded she's painting on her kitchen table do you think it's possible to do the course from a kitchen table yes absolutely but i'm so sorry about your flooded no. studio how awful no. i hope you didn't lose lots of artwork that happened to someone a guy i follow on instagram recently as well and he didn't get a lot of his artwork out. Um, it was completely ruined. Oh. So how awful. But yes, you can do this. Lots of people who take the course don't have a studio um, and they manage perfectly fine. Of course, it's lovely if you have a big space to work in and everybody wants that. And But also, I don't know where you are in the world, but while the weather holds, you can be outside you know, you can do, you can stretch out into other spaces if possible, but kitchen table is absolutely fine. It's much more about the mindset and about the principles we're teaching, I think. Do you agree, Irene? I do agree. I do agree. Um, yeah, uh, you know, I, I worked that year that I did two big courses in a very tiny space and I had enough space to do enough pieces that that just helped me to work through the lessons that, that that I was learning, and and this is a good question actually because there have been a few diff a few people with English as a second language. Uh, Christiane asks, "Will it also be written?" I'm French, and you speak very fast for me sometimes. <laughs> Sorry about that. So yeah, yeah, um, yes, everything. I'm trying to think if there is anything. Everything is written because we have already transcribed all the lessons. So that is written below the video. When we do the live Q&As, we take the, um, the transcript from that and we paste it as a PDF. We have a PDF download for every single week for you to download and keep. So even though you get a year's access to the course, you've really got it forever because you get a PDF every week that has everything in it. Um, and uh, a question that's come up here is about Art Tribe and the what is Art Tribe? And if you're a member of Art Tribe, does this clash with it? So Art Tribe and this course are totally different. Think of Art Tribe as Netflix for art. It's a place you can log in, watch something, get inspired, 
Um, it's a place with a Facebook group and a community, and we do mini classes each month. But it doesn't take you from point A to point B because it's a membership. It's like getting a magazine every week, something different in it every week. A course is we start here, we have very carefully structured things to, to lead you on a path that hopefully if we've done everything right, by the end, you will be in a different place. So they're two very different things. For people who do not sign up for the course, after we're done getting everybody in, because it's a lot of work to get everybody in, we will be then um, sending out an email um, probably the week the course starts, inviting you into our tribe with a discounted price. So look out for that. But the people who take Find Your Joy, at the end of that, you will be offered a, a steeper discount on our tribe than the people who were on the free course. Because that's only fair if you've invested in me that you get to stay on with us. But our tribe is very different. It we don't teach the same things in there. It's more about, as I say, inspiration and community. If you are interested in this course and you didn't get an email, by the way, if you go to my website, louisefletcherart.com, it's right there on the homepage, or my Instagram, or my Facebook, um, or into the Facebook group for the course, it's there. And if you didn't get the email and you can't find any of that, you can just email us at fyjteam, T-E-A-M, at gmail.com. Ruth, the sign-up link is in your emails, hopefully, or on my website. Um, if you are a member of Art Tribe or you are a former student of Find Your Joy, you will also have received several emails at this point of giving you a discount code that you can use to sign up for the course. If you have not received that, again, you will be able to email us or just email me through my website. Either way, you will get to us. There's someone asking, uh, does the course include a periodic Q&A chat like we're doing now? And yes, there are two live chats every week to take account of the different time zones. One will be UK time morning, and one will be UK time this time. So people on the West Coast of America and people in Australia and New Zealand all get a chance to come onto a call at a time that doesn't mean them getting up in the middle of the night. So yes. two every week. Yes, and you don't have to go to them both, although you can watch them both if you like. I like listening to those kind of things while I'm doing the exercise. Lovely to see you signed up, Nina and Phil. Um, if for anybody struggling, just give it a little bit of time or email us. Christina asks, will there be 50,000 people on the course? If there were, Christina, I would be retiring on an island. <laughs> no, there won't be 50,000 people. Although I understand why you think there might be, but no. The free course is, we widely advertise that and we bring in as many people as we can. And we do not expect most of those people to stay on and do the full course. I can't tell you how many there will be because who knows. Um, but, um, you know, we we know it won't be 50,000 or anywhere close to that. Um, Jill, you can't. Um, will I be able to use the discount code? There is. Um, no, uh, Jill. So the discount code we send out for our tribe will be on a very limited time. So if you want to sign up, you'll need to sign up in that time. Um, and nobody needs to apologize that they're not staying on for the full course. By the way, I'm seeing lots of sorry, I can't stay on on YouTube, but you don't need to apologize to me. There was no uh, quid, pro quo, quid pro quo for doing this course. Um, I'm afraid, no, we do not have a sliding scale and we do not have um, special prices. You can imagine how complicated that would be to administer. And I just do not have the means and wherewithal to do that. What I do do is I make this course. It's not quite a third. It's it's a it's a lot less than half the price of a course that I would say is of a similar standard. So I really do my best to make it affordable and fair. Given the value that's offered, it is 
ridiculously inexpensive and I know that's still too much for some people but I really do my best to make it fair and reasonable and I want to talk oh, one question sorry from Ronna is it suitable for someone who's representational so Ronna I don't know if you were on the welcome call but two of our coaches work representationally Donna and Marie Louise both are former students many of our students are representational painters for some reason this comes up every year and every assignment that we give has a representational option and an abstract option so you never have to do abstract if you don't want to and I do demos um, sometimes representationally and sometimes abstract and this year some of my coaches are filming demos as well which will be an extra bonus we've never had so uh, you will get demos from Marie, Louise and Donna on some of the weeks to show how they handle it. Um, now, this is a question, Louise, which will be a tough one to answer, but I want to address it simply because it probably is one of those how long is a piece of string kind of questions. But it's worth it's worth reading it to you. What would you say is the ratio of skills to mindset shift in the course? She says, I have a good grasp of the elements and principles, but I like the introspection. I think the introspection runs through everything. So even when we talk about colour and composition, so we have four weeks that are about actually principles, composition, colour, tone and mark making. Even there, it's about introspection. It's, it's not about... Here's the rules of color. It's about how to explore your color preferences, how to explore your composition and how to do it in a fun way, not how to do it in a rules based way. And that is the biggest difference, I think, between the way I teach those things and the way other people do. And there's one thing I wanted to mention. Um Rika says, how fast do I have to sign up? You have until the 14th of September, so you have plenty of time. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention, because it got asked a lot and it won't apply to everyone, so I apologise if you don't know what I'm talking about, but multiple people asked, how does this course compare to CVP, which is an online course for artists that happened earlier in the year? And for some people, they have already taken that course and now they're wondering, should I do this? So the difference, the first thing I want to say is CVP is a very, very good course. I haven't taken it recently. I know it's changed, but when I took it five years ago, it set me off on the path to where I am now. It's wonderful. When I took it, I saw some things I felt like I could do better. Just honestly, I felt like, OK, there's some things missing here that I feel like I can bring to it. And so when I realized I could teach, which I didn't know at the time, I started my own teaching. So personally, and of course I'm biased, I think Find Your Joy is more cohesive and well-rounded. I think it deals with the same principles of art making, which anyone would teach, color, composition, tone. Those are things which any art course worth its salt would have to teach you. But I think Find Your Joy deals with it in a more structured way. And particularly because I begin from the freedom mindset attitude and then move into the principles. I found when I took CVP that some people got bogged down and lost. They couldn't they couldn't use the principles they were being taught about, say, composition, because they hadn't yet decided what they were interested in or, or learned how to play with paint or learned how to be free and experimental. So I take a different approach. But the truth is either course will give you a really good foundation in painting and either course will teach you more than enough to set off on your own journey of exploration. So it's more, I suppose, a question of emphasis and interest. What what Nicholas and I are interested in personally and then how that translates into our teaching I remember telling him once after I took it I noticed a lot of people got stuck in week three when you said play with paint 
And he was like, well, they should just play with paint. And he didn't mean it dismissively. He just didn't understand what I meant. Why would you have a problem playing with paint? And i that's where I saw, okay, I can help with that because I understand why those people feel that way. And I feel like I can help them through it. So I don't think one is better than another for a different level of artist. I think maybe it just comes down to, do you resonate with me as a teacher? Have you enjoyed it? And perhaps most importantly, if you took CVP, do you really need another course or have you got more to um, absorb from what you already paid for? Because sometimes that's it. You've learned a lot from Nicholas. If you jump in and do something with me, have you had time to digest what he gave you? Because you don't want to just be spending money for the sake of spending money. On the other hand, sorry, one thing, some people love being in a course and love being around other people doing things. And if that's you, you know, go for it. But what do you think, Irene? Because you've done both. Yeah, I think that's a very generous thing of you to say, Louise. And I've always said this to other people. I discovered you first on Facebook and all your free stuff at the beginning of 2019. And I knew I wanted to do whatever course you were going to be doing. And you said, I'm doing a course later in the year. So I was really waiting for you to release it. And then you started to tell people about CVP when it's when it came out and it was coming out, uh, I think, in the spring of that year. And yours was coming out in the late summer or the early autumn that same year. And I was in such a quandary. Could I do that? Should I do this? How much would it cost? Blah, blah, blah. And you you just said, look, just think about if the CVP bus was just about to set off or was to this effect and off it went, how would you feel that you hadn't jumped on? And I knew that my answer was there. And then I checked my finances and I discovered that I had just about 15 quid more than I needed to sell. Right. <laughs> I love Nicholas's course. I was utterly and completely brand new so I had no pre um, education no preconceived ideas about what's right to do and what's wrong to do and so whatever he said to do in his lessons I did I (laughs) followed it and I worked it and made all kinds of weird and wonderful things but I was still dying to join your course so I did that too and I would look back on 2019 as the year that I got everything, absolutely everything. And I got it from two people who, as you've been saying, taught a lot of the same principles, but the two styles were so different. I'm not one of those people who says, oh, you know, I, I love Nicholas's work, but I'm, I'm, I'm not keen on his delivery or I love his delivery, but I'm not keen on his work. I don't give a damn about his work. And I like his delivery. I like his empathy. I like his woo-woo-ness and how he sometimes looks a bit lost. I like (laughs) Yeah. I really liked the guy and I enjoyed him. But I knew already that I was waiting for you as well. So I don't know if I've helped anyone by saying that, but you can get a lot from both. However, Louise's great strength is that she put, in my view, like her, the horse before the cart in Find Your Joy. She gave us first the space, like you've had in this free course, to just let loose and play and get used to that before introducing the principles of art that she teaches so well, differently and really well, to help you to to move forward. So I think they're both really valid and great courses. Yes. You know. And it just, you know, who do you feel most comfortable with? And I won't be offended if it's Nick. Um, I just saw a question here that I wanted to address. Uh, I've lost it, but Samed, I can't see that. Oh, there we are, Samed. I'm thinking of signing up. It feels like I might be the only guy or one of very few nervous about that. You know what? That's funny because this course we're talking about, which is led by a guy, it's the same. It's mostly female students. And so it, and people say that, oh, well, it's because the ladies like Nick and they're going there for that. But the ladies come to me, too. So I don't know if it's because I've, I've often wondered about this. Is it because men tend to be less joiners? Is it I certainly don't target any marketing only to women. So I don't know why. But um, there are always are fewer guys. Samed, that is just the truth. Yeah. We love it when we when when you join in because 
obviously diversity in any type of diversity is really helpful to the group. Some of the guys that joined in prior years are really vocal and active and fantastic members of the course. And some stay really quiet and in the background, probably because they feel a bit left out. And I feel bad about that. And my coaches are all women. And that is through no other reason than the fact that the course students are so heavily weighted to women that we end up, my coaches were all students once, so we end up with female female coaches. But we have no bias, that's all I could say, and we'd love to have you, but I totally understand that feeling. Uh, is there any other question? There's a lot of questions we've already answered, so I would go through the sales page that is in the email that was sent out to you because there's a lot in there. I would watch this video again from the beginning because you'll see those answers. Or... Email, 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 fyjteam at gmail.com with any extra questions. I'm looking if there's anything that we haven't. I'm looking to. Um, has the Art Tribe discount for the course been sent out? Yes, several times, uh, starting a few weeks ago. So if you don't have that, just email either the Art Tribe email or fyjteam at gmail.com and we'll make sure you get that. Valerie, I'm interested in painting portraits. Will this fit with the course? Absolutely. As I said, there's always a representational assignment. I've done a couple of demos where I'm working on a portrait. I know Donna has filmed a demo where she's working on a portrait. So the representational assignment that we give will always apply to anything, landscape, still life, portraits, whatever it is that you paint realistically. So absolutely. The deadline to sign up is September 14th. Uh, lovely to see you, Wendy, Lou, all the people who signed up. I'm sorry I can't keep up with all the lovely signups. I'm um, doing good cheers to the people who, are, who have put in Facebook that they've signed up. Yeah, I'm looking in YouTube and there's lots and lots of people here. Uh, Marilyn says, are the coaches and you helping us for the one year? No, I'm sadly not because we have our own art practices. So we're here live for the 12 weeks. But you get to keep all our Q&A sessions where any question you could possibly have is answered. You get to keep all the um, you get to read all the answered questions which are within the website where the course is and all that's available to you. But we can't be there for more than the 12 weeks. Uh, Chantal is asking, how about professional artists? And I know I can say with confidence that we do get artists of every conceivable level from complete beginners to those who are professionals who have been working for many years, a lot of whom come in uh, because they want to mix it up. They want to they want to break from what they've been doing. And, and I know that isn't what the word professional means. You might not be doing the same thing over and over, but many are. Many have got into a professional art practice and they're painting for what for galleries. They're, they're, they're painting what the galleries know they can sell but they themselves as artists are starting to feel stifled by that. So we, yeah. do, we do get people like that. Would you add anything to that, Louise, about is it okay for professionals? Yeah, I would just say, do you feel that you got something from me in the free week? Do you feel like that moved you forward in some way? If so, I think the full course can also move you forward. What do you feel is lacking that you feel that I can give you. And if you want to ask us by email and, and, and to specify what you feel you need, then we can answer more honestly and say either yes or actually no, we're not covering that. Um, lovely to see Cynthia signing up and um, Kerry and um, anybody asking about what the cost of our tribe is, that will be coming. Don't sign up via my website because you'll be getting a discount code once the sales period for the course is over. We just can't manage everything at once because Astrid on my team who manages the administration for our tribe is currently helping us with this. So she can't do both. Um, Catherine is asking who inspired me. Catherine, um, we sent out an email a couple of days ago. And if you've got any of our emails, if you click on the catch up page for the free course, um, there's a video. And I actually 
described my journey on there. Um, but actually, one of the artists who most inspired me, who I don't know if I mentioned on that video, it was a local artist who um, was a farmer. And I was once driving down the road, I've said this many times, and I saw this sign that said, paintings, asparagus, and topiary. And it was like, right, I have to see what this is. And their farm was selling fresh asparagus, but also his wife sold topiary and he sold his paintings. And I, you went up these steps into this converted barn and he made it into a gallery of his own artwork. And he had a little studio off the barn. And I was so inspired by that idea that you could make your own space and sell your own work. And with just a sign outside, I didn't know he was very well known locally by that point. And um, that was really inspiring to me. And then I recently was on Facebook and it reminds you of your old posts. And this was about 10 years ago that I met him and the post came up and I couldn't believe how small his barn was because to me at the time it was cavernous and amazing. And actually it was quite small and not that much bigger than my own space. But he was super inspiring to me because I remember asking him, what does the art world think of your work or something? And he said, I have no idea. I don't paint for the art world. I paint for myself. Love and, that. and he sold so much work. Every time you went there, there were people taking paintings out of his studio. So he was a big inspiration to me. That's very, that sounds very inspiring mm -hmm. to me at the moment, Louise, because as some people may remember, I've said I'm moving out of my city centre studio. Mm -hmm. uh, don't ask me exactly why. It's just a thing that I feel is the right thing to do at this time. Ideally, I will end up with a, a garden studio. But the thing that kept me in the city centre studio, whilst I loved it in many ways, one of the great things was that the studio I was in was in a big building with lots of other studios and we were part of the bi-monthly art walk. Where oh, I've been to that, yeah. I've been to art, that. art lovers were, came and walked around the city. It's a small city and they can go to many venues and see lots of artwork. And I thought, oh, this is great. People can get to know me. They can get to see my artwork. I'm not someone who's pushed to be in shows and exhibitions, but at least I was being seen and I did get a few buyers. And the idea of not being in the city centre felt like, oh, but ooh, who's, who's going to see my work? What am I going to do about that? But now I love to hear about your guy, your farmer, because I think, do you know what? I can do my own flipping thing. I can put a great big sign outside my garden if I have one. And I can just, I can make something happen in my own locality if I want to. Yeah, so I find yes, that exactly. Inspiring, really inspiring. Somebody's asked me what was his name, and I have completely drawn a blank. And I'm looking, he's dead now, unfortunately. He died quite young of lung cancer. And um, oh my God, why can I not remember his name? How awful. I've got about four of his paintings hanging up around the house because I loved them so much, and I cannot remember. Um, you look at a question, Irene, and I'm going to try and Google because this feels like I should know. Um, yeah. I'll see if I can find him. Uh, I've got it. Richard Snowden. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah. is annoying that I couldn't remember that. Is, is my brain going? Richard Snowden. So you can still find uh, remnants of him online. Um, there's a Saatchi art page. I think his website's now long gone. Um, his studio was turned into a wedding venue by his wife once he passed away. So that doesn't exist anymore. Um, but what a lovely man he was. He was just so full of joy and life and so unconcerned. I remember that he said he used to paint two paintings after work every night. He'd just come into his studio, make two paintings. So he painted really fast. And he said then he would put them on a table and then his wife would decide if they were any good or not. And then if she thought they were good, she would get them framed and put them in the gallery. Most of the stuff she just put in a plant chest. And if you told him, I love this painting, he would go, oh, right, thank you. And if you told, you know, if you didn't like something or you passed over it, he didn't care either. That's what I find so inspiring and what has guided probably the way I am. He just was untouched by other people's opinions. Yeah. And it's just as important, isn't it, to be as untouched by 
the hugely positive ones and the hugely negative ones, to get ourselves to that space where neither praise nor criticism moves us from our center stability is, is a brilliant place to get to. It's nice when people say, I love that, and you go, yeah. oh, oh, nice, thank you. But it doesn't, it doesn't give you anything and it doesn't alter how you feel about yourself. And that, I think, is a, is a great kind of place to get to in all of your life. Yes, so, so true. Um, anybody having a problem signing up? Um, it may be that you have an outdated web browser, first of all. So you might want to try updating your web browser. But also, you can just email us and you can reply to the email that came out just asking for help. Um, definitely you can continue with the course at your own pace beyond the 12 weeks. Oh, Judy knows Richard. She says his work is so unique. He was true to himself. Um, yeah, um, somebody is asking again, how long will it take uh, each week? Minimum six to seven hours. Um, and then more if you want to spend more. When I take this kind of course, I tend to go all in. Um, Christine, there should be no reason why Canada isn't an option to register. I don't know why that's happening, but just email us. Um, yes, you can paint on gessoed wallpaper for the full course. The materials list is uh, in the course once you sign up, but it's very similar to what you've already used. You won't need to spend any special money. We keep it really inexpensive. Anything else on Facebook? Um, I'm checking back a little, a little, uh, a little distance. Yeah, I'm just checking as well. I think I've pretty much done YouTube except for repeat questions. Um, yeah, there's some re repeat questions. Harry Shock, what would you feel if after completing the full course, I would organize a very similar course in my country and start to teach the same things to people around me? I would think that was um, copyright infringement, to be really honest. I I think that there's nothing wrong with teaching these. There's nothing I teach that is so unique that you couldn't find your own way to teach it, but you can't just take someone else's course and then copy that, even if you're in another country. It's just wrong. And also it won't be as good you need to find your way of teaching. So what I would suggest is take the course, do the learning, make yourself into a really good artist who's successful, selling lots of paintings, and then find a way to teach how to do that to other people. Um, Michaela's asking, she's starting a degree. Do you think it's possible? I honestly have no idea, Michaela, because I haven't done a degree since I was 18. So I don't know what's involved. Um, I wouldn't want to say I wouldn't want to say yes, because you might end up just tearing your hair out. Um, Ethel, yes, there is a guarantee. You get three weeks to take the course, get all of the content. And as long as before the end of the third week, if you let us know that it's not for you, you can cancel and receive a full refund with no questions asked. Um, just checking. Um, if you are not a member of Art Tribe, you don't get that discount code if you sign up today. Someone just asked that. That wouldn't be fair because the, the discount for Art Tribe members is a thank you to them for being with me for a period of time. And it wouldn't be fair then to let people jump in now and get that discount. But you will be offered, if you're on the full course, a very generous discount to be a member of Art Tribe that will make you at the price that most Art Tribe members join for uh, before it increased this year. I think that we've gone on long enough because it's 7.20 and people must be just uh, going with us. But um, I am going to look at doing, um, I'm going to be sending you emails all this week, which are not just sales emails, although there will be some, oh, sign up for the course in there there's going to be some educational content. So make sure to stay tuned for that because it's all foundation for the full course. And if you're not continuing with us, it's all, you know, fodder for your ongoing creativity. 
So those will come out this week. If you're not signing up, you don't feel that don't feel you have to email me to say you're not signing up. You can just unsubscribe if you don't want to get them anymore, or you can keep getting them and learn some more stuff. Um, and you can email us, you can ask questions in the Facebook group. Um, and I am going to be around all week. So are the coaches, so are the moderators who've been helping with the free course to answer any and all questions. Just give us a little bit of time on the emails because in the first few days it goes crazy and we're we're all typing away and we're doing our best to get back to you. Um, I can't wait. For those of you who signed up tonight, thank you for your faith in us. We cannot wait to get started. I know you are going to transform from wherever you are now to wherever you want to be next. That's our job and we are going to commit for the next 12 weeks to help you do that. And for everybody else who is going on on your own, thank you for being with us. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you, Irene, for being here. It's been an absolute joy, as always. And I will see you, Irene, every day this week. And I will see everybody else wherever I see you. Sure. Bye, Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone.